Welcome to the Pathmunk Presents podcast. My name is Sean Donnelly Lewis, and in today's episode, we're speaking with Sam Lister. He's the founder at BlankSlateMedia.com. Sam, what's up? Thanks for having me on, Sean. Super excited to, excited to chat today. Yeah, Blank Slate Media. Tell me all about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so essentially right now in this current iteration, we help uh, entrepreneurs scale their video content across social. So um, let's say they have a podcast, they have a Zoom interview, whatever that is, they send it to us and then we create hundreds of videos per month um, across really social for, for a bunch of different brands and entrepreneurs, but definitely didn't start this way. Uh, launched the company in uh, October of 2018. Uh, that was when I was like just getting into the video world. I just had an iPhone and um, I just had a few opportunities come in through LinkedIn asking me if I could create videos for, for some connections here in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, where I'm from in the States. Um, I said yes to all those opportunities and from 2018 to really at the end of 2019. So for that whole year, I worked on building up a product, a video production company from the ground up from an iPhone, hired, hired a few, uh, like more skilled videographers and, um, some of my friends there and just really spent the, spent the whole year learning the video space, iterating, pivoting, um, doing a lot of in-person shooting events, interviews, um, stuff like that. And then when 2020 came around, uh, we were all kind of slapped in the face with the pandemic, with COVID going on. So that really shut down all in-person uh, shoots for us. So uh, we were really forced to pivot really quickly to keep our doors open, um, our, our virtual doors in a sense. So that's when I launched the editing company. I'm still under blank slate, just slight, slight pivot there. Um, I've tested launching an editing company in the past, but I just really couldn't figure out the systems and putting all the pieces in place. But um, I went all in in April of 2020. So this past pretty much 12 months, I've been working on building this company again, kind of from a new ground zero, um, implementing everything I've learned over the past few years. So going going really well, growing growing fairly fairly quickly. So that's kind of where we're at now. And talk about your clientele for a second. Are you working with with big companies, with mom and pop companies down the street that are trying to up their step up their video content game? Talk about your clientele. Yeah, it's definitely um, more small, medium-sized business owners. Uh, we're really focused on the founder and entrepreneur, so more of like the personal brand instead of the business. So we've worked with people like uh, David Meltzer and Jesse Itzler and Casey Adams and uh, other podcasters uh, like that. So uh, it, we, we work with a pretty wide variety of people, but all centered around that individual. And so you talked about the company growing um, kind of meteorically, right, uh, and organically. Uh, Talk about, yeah, talk about how you've been able to grow the company. Is it, has it been, is it still a lot more outbound or is it an inbound based company? Um, how have you been able to grow? Yeah, it's, it's been a really interesting journey through through business and me learning what lead generation is, what inbound versus outbound is. And I had no idea any of that when I was starting the company. So at the, at the start for the good, probably first year, year and a half, until I really launched the video editing side of things, everything was inbound. So everything was just kind of funneled through my personal brand and word of mouth and referrals and everything. Um, I created a ton of content on LinkedIn specifically. So that's where a lot of my leads were coming in when I was doing uh, like in-person shooting, in-person videography stuff. But then once I uh, pivoted over to the video editing side and was building my remote team, that's when I really kicked up the outbound side of things. Um, just because I knew uh, in inbound in general is a super long-term strategy, building brand in general is a super long-term strategy, but I needed to keep my doors open this month and, and pay rent that month. Um, so that's when I really started testing outbound. So um, now it's now it's a pretty healthy mix of inbound versus outbound that, that we get from referrals or content and stuff. But I'd say probably still probably like 65, 35% or so, um, 65 outbound, 35% uh, inbound where we're at now. And talk about the website. What role does the website uh, play in acquiring new clients? Uh, we really, we really use it as, uh, as a landing page for, um, for demos and everything just to send people, send people to, we don't drive a ton of traffic to our website. Actually, uh, we have like super light SEO, but it's the website really hasn't been a huge player in the, in the past for us. It's, it's all been social and, uh, interactions over DMS and everything. Okay. If you were to improve something on the website, what would it be? Would it be the actual ability to convert to people that do visit or the quality of leads that you're able to generate or the user experience? Which one of those three? 
<laughs> uh, I think everything comes down to lead gen, like converting more more people into into paying customers. And coming back to the the service that you offer, what would you just for everyone listening? What would you say separates what you do um, from other people that occupy the same space? What do you guys do just a little differently? Yeah, we have our whole backend system built out. So uh, we have a pretty cool uh, like creator portal in a sense to make communication with the uh, um, with the editors and everything super super streamlined and super simple. And so this is the part of the show where I get to pick your brain as somebody who who is is forming a company even now and and you know pivoting with Corona and all those things. I just want to talk about a little bit about challenges, right? So when I say innovation, what would you what would you say even based on your experience, based on what you've seen? Um, what would be the biggest challenge to be innovative and a growing company at the same time? I think move, moving fast and getting out of your own head and uh, taking taking more risk than anyone else. Um, I think that's what I've I've been really solid at over the past few years. Um, by no means am I the best entrepreneur, business owner, anyone, but I'm I'm super risk heavy and I'm not afraid to put all of my money on the line when it comes down to it and uh, invest everything I have. So that's just been a common theme. Um, and I think that just drives innovation of adapt or die mentality. And that's, that's something I'm constantly thinking about of like, if we're not trying to put ourselves out of business, someone else will. Um, Gary says that a ton, but I think it's so true. Like I pretty much completely shut down our production side of things and put that out of business. Obviously with COVID, we could have went through it, struggled through it. Um, but I wanted to change. And I think that's the ability to pivot and adapt and change really quickly is, is vital when it comes to building a startup from the ground up. Obviously the bigger you get, the harder it is to adapt and pivot. Um, but it's, uh, we see the biggest companies in the world. That's what they're best at. And so when you, when you hear something like ROI, this is, this is obviously a big thing for somebody, an entrepreneur or somebody who's starting a company, how do we actually make money? What would you say is the biggest challenge yeah, from growing a company and keeping ROI. What would you say you've ran into or, or anything that you would think on that? Yeah, I, I think um, I love testing different things. I love putting my money uh, to work for itself to see where I can drive the most ROI and stuff. And uh, I'm whether, whether it's, we're talking investments like Bitcoin and SPACs and everything, but also different lead generation sources. I'm very quick to test everything and analyze, okay, is this working? Is it not? Um, but to, to make that initial push, um, I, I'm typically not very scared to, to do so. Obviously I'm not playing with millions of dollars being invested at a time, but, but it's still just my, my own, my own money that I've earned over the years. Um, when it comes to ROI, like there's more calculated people than me at it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm super quick to test of, Hey, if this product's a thousand bucks, I'm going to, I'm going to test it out. If I make my money back within two, three months of that, cool. Then it's, then it's gonna, gonna just become more effective in the, in the future. Um, and I, I'll make my money back faster. So it's just really a game of, of testing for me. I can definitely get better at it, but, um, that's kind of how I look at it of how fast can I make my money back on this? Uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I like testing different lead gen sources. I really only need to close one or two clients for it to be worth it in, in a lot of cases. So it makes it pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit about how I view ROI. Yeah. And some, one more, just one more of these type of things when it comes to conversion optimization, what would you say is the biggest challenge? Is that something that you've come across in growing your business, actually trying to optimize the amount of people that are interested and coming in and checking it out? Or is that something for you guys where, yeah, it's not something that you face? If so, what is the challenge and how have you been able to come or overcome it? Uh, yeah, I definitely don't have a good answer for that. Uh, I spend the least amount of time trying to convince anyone that our service is right for them. Um, so again, I don't, I don't have an answer for that besides I'm, I'm spending very, very little time trying to convince people and say, say they're a lead. Cool. We'll follow up with them a few times. Like if, if it's right for them, they will sign up. If it's not, then they won't. Um, we, we don't push sales super, super hard down people's throat because every other company is doing that. So again, uh, that's, that's what I push on the team of spend zero time convincing people, meet people where they're at. Um, and then naturally 
thing things will work out but we we never try to cram anything down down people's throat and that's I'm not saying obviously turning, turning leads and converting them is cramming, cramming shit down their throat. But just in a sense, I, I, we, we try to just take a super organic approach of meeting people where they're at. Yeah. I just want to switch gears here for a second and talk about you as a leader. What kind of content do you consume to help educate yourself and grow as a person and as a professional? Uh, yeah, I consume a ton of podcasts, uh, a lot of YouTube, um, yeah, entrepreneurs like Gary, Gary V, Tom Billu, uh, Jay Shetty. But I also love being tapped into into culture of hey, what what are the other top top podcasts in the world? Super tapped into like the Barstool ecosystem, BFFs, um, Logan Paul. So uh, I definitely like to mix up content of okay, here's more entrepreneurial, business, professional, self development side. But then here's tapped into culture. What's going on with? Jake Paul and Ben Askren's fight on Triller uh, in a few days of, of this recording. So um, things like that, I, I definitely try to blend two, two worlds together in that sense. Not a book reader or anything like that? I, I, I do read books. Um, I, again, I kind of go in waves of books. Of, I go super hard into books uh, a few months and then I kind of like uh, let off. I, I really love Blinkist, the app Blinkist. Uh, this is definitely not a paid promotion, but it essentially <laughs> summarizes nonfictional books. Um, so you can uh, read, read or listen to the like, main highlights, kind of like Spark Notes, but a little more uh, concise. Um, so I, I really do like, like that. And I, I, looking at your LinkedIn profile, you're a big fan of YouTube. Is that right? You're a big believer yes. in YouTube, using YouTube to, to consume content and those sorts of things. Very cool. Yep. So just as we're slowly coming to the end of the interview, I just want to jump into our rapid fire questions. So these are just short and sweet, but honest. Answer honestly. Just something to, uh, yeah, let's see how you do. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. What's the single thing that your company is focused on at the moment the most? firing myself and running all of the systems, building all the <laughs> systems. So I don't need to uh, have a hand in the business. If there were no boundaries in technology, none whatsoever, what would be the one thing you want to have fixed for your company today? Making myself immortal. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. It sounds I like make a, a lot. Of, lo I can make a lot of damage uh, and make a lot of impact if I, if I could never die. You know, I don't know. Would you really want that though? Yes. Okay. I, I actually just had a podcast and they would ask me, uh, if, if you were, uh, if you had the op option to be immortal, would you? And I, and I said, yes, absolutely. Like my, my main goal in life is to push humanity forward. Um, and what better way to do that than to live through so many different iterations of humanity. And it, it would be a trip to see this ecosystem and world come to an end at one point. Uh, but again, if, if you put yourself into, if your goals wrap around something bigger than yourself, then you get over that pretty quick. And I'm not saying that it sounds super cold and like disheartening of like, yo, you'd probably watch every single person around you that, you know, die at one point, which would be the worst thing in the world. Uh, but af after that, I think you could focus on really pushing the, the species of humanity forward. So yeah, I, I would do that. <laughs> We've gotten way off track. Okay. What's the last thing that kept you off, uh, kept you awake at night about your company? Uh, payroll. Constantly if, paying people around me. If you were to, let's just say you start your professional career over again, what would be the one thing you, uh, what would be the one piece of advice you give yourself? Focus, Sam, focus, focus on one thing at a time and then move on. All right, everyone, check out all the work Sam is doing at blank slate media, B L N K slate media.com. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Sam. The last order of business is the last word. So if you just want to sum up everything that we talked about today, or if you feel like there's something that we've forgotten, I just want to give you the floor. The last yeah, word. Uh, Absolutely. Again, thanks for having me on, Sean. It's, it's been a pleasure. Um, I, I could go and plug 12 different companies and, and such, but uh, I don't think that'll be super valuable to you. But if you're listening, like life is too short to do shit you hate. So do something you love. Um, as cliche as that sounds, like it's, it's so true. You never know when, the, when your days here on, on earth are coming to an end and tomorrow isn't guaranteed for anyone. So um, I, I really, really wanna try to push people to do stuff they love. And if business isn't for you, then don't go into business. Don't go into entrepreneurship. And I know this, 
whole podcast is centered around business and entrepreneurship, but so many people go into entrepreneurship and, and business just because it seems like the cool thing to do when in reality, that'll just lead to a, a life of, of misery, uh, as harsh as that sounds. So find what works for you, find what you love to do and do, do more of that. Thanks for being on the show today, Sam. Thanks, John.